This is the Components of God's Armor, Part 3, Feet Shod with the Preparation of the Gospel of Peace. For a Roman soldier, a good pair of boots was an essential component of his armor. They were usually constructed of thick soles with metal pieces protruding from the bottom, much like athletic shoes today. And this provided them stability during combat. And as Christian soldiers, we need stability too, the stability to stand firmly upon the Word of God which will prepare us to share the Gospel. God created man in His image for the purpose of fellowship, for His good pleasure. But when the enemy appeared, he brought deception which resulted in sin into the world. And both still remain to this day, and in fact they are cre increasing in these last days. But our good and merciful Father provided a remedy. He sent His Son Jesus. And when we accept His free gift of salvation through Jesus' atoning work on the cross of Calvary, we are set free from the bondage of sin and receive eternal life. John 3.16 And when we study God's Word, it will purify us, sanctify us, and conform us into the image of His Son. And when we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we get enlisted into His army and empowered to fulfill His agenda. But we still get to choose if we will report for duty or not. But because of what He's done for us, His purpose ought to be our purpose. What is His purpose? To rescue as many prisoners as possible from Satan's kingdom and turn them into fully committed followers of Jesus Christ. Does He need us to accomplish His purpose? Does He require this of us? Does it impact our salvation? No, He doesn't need anyone or anything, and He doesn't require it of us, but He's graciously chosen to allow us to the wonderful privilege to participate. And this privilege should not be taken lightly. Every believer of Jesus Christ has been given the Great Commission. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Matthew 28:19. And if we choose to be obedient to that command, it's important to know how to present the gospel. We must always be ready to make a defense to anyone who asks to give an account for the hope that is in us, yet with gentleness and reverence. 1 Peter 3.15 and to be diligent to present yourself approved to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed, accurately handling the word of God, 2 Timothy 2.15. Because we must be prepared as we never know when the opportunity will present itself to share the gospel. But we must always remember that it's not our ability or in our capacity to save others. It is God who saves, not us. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. John 6.44 I planted, Apollos watered, but God was causing the growth. So then neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but God who causes the growth. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verses 6 and 7 Jesus is the one who saves and seeks only our availability to be used as his conduit to accomplish his purpose. And when you share the gospel with someone and they don't come to Christ, it doesn't mean you have failed. You have planted a seed. Why do you think God doesn't go ahead and take us to heaven when we receive salvation? He wants us to help increase his son's kingdom. And sharing the gospel is our only purpose for still being here. And it's the key to fulfillment in this life, the abundant life that Jesus said he came to bring. From the book Permission Evangelism, J. Campbell White is quoted as having made this observation, and I believe it's true. Quote, Most people are not satisfied with the permanent output of their lives. Nothing can wholly satisfy the life of Christ within his followers except the adoption of Christ's purpose toward the world he came to redeem. Fame, pleasure, and riches are but husks and ashes in contrast with the boundless and abiding joy of working with God for the fulfillment of his eternal plans. 
the people who are putting everything into Christ undertakings are getting out of life its sweetest and most priceless rewards. End of quote. Wow. Doesn't that inspire you to strap on your boots, get out there, and share the good news of salvation through Jesus Christ? By making God's mission our mission, it will be easier to say no to Satan's attack to lure you into aimlessness. We were saved for a purpose. Will we report for duty and respond to Jesus' command to go? Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace which was granted us in Christ Jesus from all eternity? 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 9 and if we truly believe that he's coming for his church soon and grasp hold of, of, of the awful, awful judgment coming upon those who will be left behind, we'll submit to God and resist the devil by being more intentional in the way we live. God has enlisted us in the struggle to advance his kingdom, and it is a holy calling, my brethren. It is a blessing, an honor, and a privilege not to dismiss or take lightly. Paul tells us, Therefore be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time, because the days are evil. So then, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 17. Jesus has commanded us to go and make disciples, and that is his will for us. But will you go? You've got a decision to make. Will you be like Moses, who said, Pardon your servant, Lord. Please send someone else. Or will you be like Isaiah? Here I am, Lord. Send me. Just as I'm closing, the Holy Spirit is bringing to mind a scripture that was discussed during Spiritual Warfare Document Part 1. There is no neutral ground. For Jesus says, He who is not with me is against me. And he who does not gather with me scatters. In Luke 11:23. So I hope you will commit and say, I will go, Lord. Loving God's richest blessings to you.